I'm just here for the plucky commentary. Uh, plucky. <laughs> I don't even think I know what that means. Me either. Is it like clucky? Like, like plucky? Like hens, like clucking in the. It's like uh. Like off, offhanded. Saying the yeah. Okay. Saying the stuff that everybody might be thinking in passing, but instead of it like going in passing, it just like passes out my mouth. I can get down with it. Mm-hmm. All right. That was very. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. See? It's valuable. See? I can't remember how we started. <laughs> how do we? Okay. <clears throat> I'll just introduce Angela and then we'll just jump right into it. Yep. And then we'll do the introduction last. Welcome to the Canon Studios podcast. There's our introduction. Yeah. Why'd you look like that? <laughs> Aren't you ready? I like the energy. Uh, yeah. Do it again. Welcome to the Canon Studios <laughs> podcast. Heck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we are so excited. We are excited because we're here with our friend Angela. Angela Albert, the amazing. I'm so excited to yep. be here. Yes. It's the <laughs> Angela Albert. Oh That's my right. goodness gracious. Dot yes. <laughs> Theangelaalbert.com. All right. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. So today we're going to be talking with our friend Angela, who if you are in Cherokee County and you mentioned the word real estate or just good people truly in the community, you think yep. of Angela. Yep. And so um, that's why she's on the show, right? Yeah. Thank you. She's such an awesome person. And so we just are going to get to know you a little bit today. Okay. You ready for it? Are you ready for it? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. Mm. Kind of, maybe. Maybe. I kind of want... Nobody's ever asked me that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Uno reverse. I'm gonna, right. I'm make you blush, friend. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> well, let's jump into it, because... Get ready. Get ready. <laughs> now, I'm, all right. So, Angela, let's, let's go back a little bit to your childhood. Okay. Right? What's one of the most vivid memories you have from your childhood? And then let's expand a little bit and ask, like... Is that vivid memory something that's kind of shaped who you are as an adult? Mm. I wish I was that deep, but I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, you know, honestly, I don't have many memories from my childhood. Mm -hmm. Um, Can't tell you what schools I went to, names of teachers. It's it's really odd. Um, I didn't have a traumatic childhood. Parents divorced, but other than that. Yeah. Uh, I would say one of my most vivid memories, and it was a good one. It was the only vacation I ever remember going on. And we went to Key West mm. and we did uh, some snorkeling. Nice. And are you guys familiar with that statue of Jesus Christ mm-hmm. in the ocean? Um, it, it's in like Key West area somewhere. Couldn't yeah. tell you exactly where it is. Mm-mm. Um, so we, we did the snorkeling thing and we went out to the statue and there was like barracu- barracudas all mm-hmm. around and wow. we didn't know that they were like attracted to shiny objects. So my dad had his <laughs> wedding ring on and those things are scary looking. Yeah. Like they'll bite, yeah. right? Yeah, like yeah, not on yeah. purpose, but, um, and we went down and we, we, you know, saw that statue of Jesus Christ in the mm-hmm. water and it was, it was pretty amazing. It's, it's like I said, it was the only vacation I remember going on and it was phenomenal. Wow. That is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Did the statue like fall into the water or like, how did that get down there? You know, now that I'm telling you the story, I probably should have done some research, but <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you. I, I really don't know how that statue got there, yeah. but look it up. It's. It is. It's an incredible experience. Hmm. Yeah. It's an incredible experience. Yeah. Now Somebody tried to make the statue walk on water, and it was like. I think it real. was very much placed there on purpose. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So not super impressive, but no, that's, that's one a, of my most vivid memories. That's an amazing story. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I am there right now. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm yeah. like, well, it's probably gonna show up on my phone, like that statue or something i don't know uh-huh you get a but facebook am, ad for it yeah or tiktok anywho yeah. <laughs> um so kind of based on really that memory do you think anything from that if you could think through details or just anything in your childhood um is there anything that you can point to that that maybe happened or an event that kind of shapes who you are as an adult if not it's okay Right. Um, um, dude, have you always been so welcoming? I feel like when you go, when there's an environment and you're there, 
it's like regardless if if it's the person's first time or the 50th time they feel welcome because you are going to come intentionally come up to them you're like a warm hug like honestly yeah. right mm-hmm. yeah so have you has angela always been like that yeah even as a child yeah that's awesome Yes, very much so. Um, so I was always, um, so I did a really good job when I was younger of playing the dumb blonde. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just kind of very much bought into that role as a child and Mm -hmm. especially like through my teen years, Mm -hmm. really, really struggled with, um, confidence Mm -hmm. and, you know, all the things. And then as I started to get older, I was like, I'm not, I'm not dumb, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> but, but now I have to like break this, break this, um, like facade kind of that I had created for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and I do, have, I will bring this full circle. So I think for me, um, you know, breaking out of that whole, I'm not this dumb blonde girl and kind of, um, rebranding myself mm-hmm. and, this was well before even real estate and, you know, making people realize that I do bring value and I do have worth. And I think kind of that journal journey and that struggle a little bit, um, just makes me uber sensitive to crowds Mm -hmm. and people. And, you know, I feel like everybody is struggling with something all of the time. Um, and, and probably even daily myself included. And so I know for me, like my nanny was a huge encourager, um, you know, my sister. So, you know, I just, I want to be that person, even if it's just a warm hug or a big smile mm-hmm. or a, we're yeah. so happy you're here or we've missed you. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, it, it did a lot for me when I would struggle. And so I just, I just want to pay it forward, I guess. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 So you mentioned your nanny. I know like we got a little glimpse of that, like being connected mm-hmm. through social media and that was just like, I don't know, like, the way that you talked about her, it was just yes. like, it made me feel like, like I had known her and I was yeah. like, wow, that's, that's like a special like person connection. That, it, it was, yeah. you know, that woman <laughs> yeah. get me to it. It was for sure. Yeah. 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 Thank you for sharing that. No, th- yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, with us. of like, course. Yeah. That's why I highlighted <clears throat> her dash, you know, like for mm. people to describe it like that is it's, it's such a beautiful way to look at somebody's life. You yeah. know, it's not the start date and the end date. It's all that amazing yeah. stuff in the middle yeah. that just makes it absolutely count. Yes. You know? Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Pause for tears. That's I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. No. Sorry, we're no. having a therapy. <laughs> All right. No, I'm not going to cry either. Okay. Good, good. We'll you do it together. Ask um, questions. Huh? Get, it, get it together. You got to ask the question. I don't know. She made me think about my granny. So I know. I'm... Now your nanny and my granny are both together. Mm-hmm. Yes. In heaven. And they're probably very good friends. Probably. Mm-hmm. Your granny's telling my nanny that black don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> And my nanny is telling your granny I had to have Botox for mine to crack. So here we are. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, Sorry. I don't have to edit that out. It's okay. That is, yeah, In that heaven, is... there are no wrinkles. So This is true. <laughs> yeah. This is true. That needs to be like a commission, like art piece now. Like, that needs right. to go up yes. in, in so, both or either of our houses. There's yeah. hope. Yeah. There is hope. In heaven, there's no wrinkles. Mm-hmm. Okay. No wrinkles. Perfect. Well, I know, um, cause we've, you know, talked, had plenty of conversations, but maybe there are some people that are listening that don't maybe understand the journey because you didn't start out in real estate. No. Um, <laughs> so what were you doing before real estate? I worked for the family business. Mm-hmm. Well, first I was a travel agent with Expedia. Okay. Um, and realized that wasn't really <clears throat> my jam. Mm -hmm. So my nanny actually started an assisted living community when she was 50 years old. Wow. Yeah. 50 years old. Um, uh, Out in Blairsville, Georgia, she bought um, what was supposed to be a bed and breakfast Mm -hmm. and realized that there was this need. And so she brought Bertha, I do believe her name was, Mm -hmm. in and started caring for her. 
And so here's this, this, this woman that, you know, immigrated here from England Mm -hmm. and, um, at 50 years of age, you know, has, has to borrow money from one of her children for Mm -hmm. the down payment on the house and bought this house and, um, turned it into a multimillion dollar assisted living community and invited me out to kind of help run it and be the office manager. And then maybe one day groom me to either, you know, buy her out or take it over and, um, quickly realized that working with family was not Mm -mm. the most ideal, especially if you want to preserve relationships. Uh, so my nanny transitioned out, I transitioned out and, um, decided we were going to, I was going to be a stay at home mom. Mm -hmm. Um, this was going into the recession. Yeah. So my husband worked, um, for like a big box store Yeah. and I stayed home and then decided we needed some extra income. And then 2008, nine hit pretty hard. I was just graduating college to be a teacher mm. yeah. with two toddlers and, or a toddler Ooh. and a newborn. Exciting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. And taught for about six years, then realized I did not like being paid based off years of service and levels of degree. Mm. I wanted to be paid based on my work ethic and my grind and, yeah. um, Went and got my real estate license and yeah. was dual career for a couple of years. And here I am seven years later and loving my life. Yeah. Absolutely crushing it. Yeah. I, I, I like to think so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm very happy. You are. Yeah. Very you happy. Are. You are yeah. for sure. I think the pattern that I've heard to kind of go back to the beginning of, is there anything in your childhood that maybe shaped who you are now? From what I just heard, the heart of everything that, You know, whether it was this in this field or this industry or whatever, Mm -hmm. your heart is like people. Mm, Very much so. And so, um, I don't know. That was just a common thing. It's always interesting to hear what people were doing before they're in their certain role now Mm -hmm. to understand, like, you know, even if you decide to do something else in 10 years, right? I think the hardest for you is still going to be like taking care of people. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. That was just something that I thought is you were saying things. So, and isn't it so true? Like sometimes we get so, uh, we get so caught up in our present and, and we can't look, we can't look to our future and we don't want to really learn lessons from our past. Mm -hmm. And, and cause I look back on that time when I was a teacher and transitioning into real estate and you and I have talked about this, like, yeah, that that fear of mm-hmm. oh working for myself and uh, d- d- wow mm-hmm. you know it's it's yeah. such it's such a it's such a real thing and then to mm-hmm. to be able to wake up seven years later and be doing something that you absolutely freaking love yeah and you get paid to do it is just a bonus and and wow yeah, yeah. what a blessing it is yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> That was just, I mean, that's like our, you know, conversation before the show is like, you know, getting past that initial fear is such a, like, it's such a huge step because once you take that step, then you kind of, you know, there's a little bit of like free fall, but then there's also like the feeling of like, you know, flying and you get to a point where you're just like, oh, okay. Like I can do this and it's hard, but it's also like something that I'm really, really enjoying and yeah. it makes me feel like alive and not just like I'm existing, right? Oh, it's, you're giving me chills. Yes, Kyle. But yeah. Yes. Good. Yeah. I mean, I, to take it a step further, do you almost think that some people are more afraid of success than they are of failure? Yes. Ooh, that's a good one. I think people get very comfortable being comfortable. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like, and and I think, like we said before we got this started, I think some of the best advice I was given it, when I took the step out on my own and mm-hmm. left the safety net of a W-2 job mm-hmm. was to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you just, man, once you do that. Yeah. But how do you do that? How does, right? Let's just, let's just talk to, I don't know, the mom out there. She's at a job that she hates, mm-hmm. right? Um, and she's just used to it. It's part of her routine. Her whole life is around that, and she wants to do something. Like, how do you become okay with being uncomfortable? I think that you have to be committed to living a life by design. Mm-hmm. I think that you have to have a very strong and powerful why, and I think you have to be really mm-hmm. connected to it. Mm. 
And I ha- I think you have to have a mentality of failure is not an option. Yeah. Mm. It, it, True. It, right? Yeah. yeah. It, I mean. Totally. Yeah. Do you think your why should make you cry? No. No? I my why can. My why makes me cry. What's your why? My why is canon. Yeah. Mm. So that's all I'm going to say because I'll start crying because I did a couple that weeks voice ago. Is starting to... <laughs> yeah, that he's for me. He's my why. Yeah. See, so my my kids, they have always been my why. I think I might be transitioning out of that a little bit. Mm-hmm. My why is getting a little bit blurred as my kids get older and mm-hmm. I get older. Mm-hmm. But they were very much and still are my driving force. And I'll tell you why they're my why because because I wanted to. I wanted to build something for them that was going to change their stars. Mm-hmm. I want to build something that they can take over. Yeah. I want to build something that they can sell. Mm-hmm. I want to build something that they can be proud of me mm-hmm. that yeah. they can. Cause we all have these barriers that we're breaking through whatever they may be. Mm-hmm. And yeah. for ours, my husband and I, ours is, is, a form of generational poverty, but not deep, deep in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and that, that's our why to, to, to break out of the W2, to break out of the mm-hmm. paycheck to paycheck, to, yeah. to break, to break yeah. all of those barriers and yeah. show them, man, yeah. there's so much more. You've just got to take the the leap and just, yeah. just do it. Yeah. I mean, Nike is so right. Just yeah. do it. <laughs> So Angela's talking to me right now. <laughs> We're going to revisit that one-on-one. <laughs> yes, we are. I think for me, you just gave me more clarity on like identifying my why even more because mine is, um, my why is Canon, yes, but I've always said it's hard for me to tell Canon to go and fulfill his dreams if I'm not fulfilling mine. Mm. Mm-hmm. And Ooh. so, but... <laughs> mm-hmm. mm. You just, what you just said was so powerful because i think oftentimes as parents right you want better for your child yes. than yeah. what you had grown not that i had a rough life at all but i think you always want better right you want to give them like a step ahead like you know and so it's like but at the same time you don't want to hinder them and just right. hand them something that they Correct. didn't work for so yeah. it's a tough balance but yeah i'm gonna go back and listen to what you just said and just play that back in my head like okay put it on a loop yeah <laughs> yeah I just put it on a loop so yeah. yeah oh man this is welcome to our <laughs> therapy <Yeah>. therapy session <laughs> this is a motivational podcast motivational I'm sorry. podcast people are like is this natural Angela like are mm-hmm. you a- yes I it really is. am yeah. honestly like yeah. when we even though we've only met a few times each time I felt like after we've met, I've been a better person after I met with you. So. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, um, and I'm not just saying that, like, I really mean it. So me and Kyle were talking about that. Like, yeah. I really I mean that. I appreciate that. So. Thank so, you both. Listeners, so, yeah. get your uh, your daily or weekly dose of Angela. Yeah, so, honestly. There you go. <laughs> Set up a meeting. What does your morning routine look like? Oh, the miracle morning. Mm. I preach about this book all the time. This okay. book changed my life. Highly recommend it. Okay. Uh, they have a lot of different um, renderings of the book, I guess. So mine is specific to real estate. Okay. So I haven't read the others, but The Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's my, my plug. Okay. Uh, all right. So I get up. I drink a big glass of water. Mm-hmm. I put my gym clothes on. Mm-hmm. I read 10 pages out of a book. Mm -hmm. I usually read out of a self-help book. Mm -hmm. Um, It just, it, it jives with me and I always want to grow and be better. Mm -hmm. Um, I journal, I visualize, meditate, however you want to use that time. Um, And, and, you know, right now I'm really focused on retirement. So I'm visualizing Mm -hmm. like rental properties and, and, you know, different Airbnb options that we're looking at. And then I get on the elliptical for about 30 to 40 minutes. And then I get right in the shower, whether, whether I'm leaving the house that day or not, Mm -hmm. I always get in the shower. um, And then my day starts promptly at 930, Mm -hmm. my work day. So it's very... The Miracle Morning outlines yeah. everything that I just said and kind of breaks down those most successful habits for you to have. I mean, own your morning, own your day, right? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. I was going to say like that, like starting your day like that seems like such a cool way to like get some really, maybe not easy wins, but just like have like 
a lot of hard things kind of taken care of or completed like really early on. And that gives you like this momentum into the rest of the day. So like when something unexpected, difficult comes up, you're like, Mm -hmm. oh, I got this. Like you got that, you know, some confidence, you know, Yes. Yeah. like a basketball player when they like, they've hit a few shots and then they're like, you know, now they're feeling it. And so. And they own their day. Yeah. They own their day. Yeah. We need to read that book. It's. Yeah. I'm like, I need to go to, we need to get Angela an affiliate link. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> I will come in every week. Yeah, I Amazon. was really nervous, but this is fun chatting with you two. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I feel like I've been talking. Do you want to huh? ask some questions? Um, do you have the questions? I do. I just get on my laptop down here. All right. I don't have a nice sleek iPad to, to hold them. Well, in my lap. that's because you gave yours away. So yeah, <laughs> it was a needed a needed cause. My dad didn't have an iPad. I think there's a pattern with our dads because my dad they inherit. takes like the hand me It's like, oh, we're going to upgrade. It's like, oh, darn, I just needed a new iPad. Yeah. 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 Uh, our, so I see this. Our strategy. inheritance was better be like, you know, <laughs> legit because like <laughs> the, uh, the device, the yeah. device uh, log uh, is, is deep. I love that. Do you have? Okay. Qu- so, okay. You got a question. Yes. Yeah. Um, so what are three words that describe the culture that you've been, that you've been able to create, um, within the real estate team that you work in? Hard work, kindness, and integrity. Mm. Hard work, kindness, and integrity. Wow. And that sounds like, (laughs) right? That sounds like, well, yeah, but like dig into that a little bit. Why? Yeah. If you could choose anything, why those, what is the significance of the hard work? Um, people look at real estate specifically and it looks so easy, you Mm -hmm. know, you're, you're going to closings and you're, you know, touring houses and, you know, it's, it's just, it's fun, right. On social media, but the behind the scenes is it's, it's a grind. Yeah. Um, and if, if you do it the way I do it, I'm, I'm old school. I, I feel so much gratitude and i'm so just like thankful yeah for every real estate opportunity that i have even still today i mean you know and so i i stay in touch with my clients um and this is what i mean by hard work you know i call them on a quarterly basis yeah. and where mm-hmm. i text them um i i throw uh events and and like just appreciation events you know like in february we're painting signs for houses mm-hmm. like yeah um you know if i see that somebody's sick or has had a baby you know i i send them something or mm-hmm. i call them to check in and so that that's hard work because you have to be purposeful in it mm-hmm. you can't you can't be transactional yeah, yeah. You know, it's more than just a commission check and a closing. It's it's a relationship. And yeah. and relationships are hard work. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I that for me is where the hard work comes into play. Um uh kindness, you know, um man, people just don't seem to be kind anymore. Mm, yeah. You know, so you know, I just had a couple call me um two nights ago that have been renting for the last seven years and you know he's asking me questions she the wife is in the car and I hear like what sounds like this this sobbing noise and Mm -hmm. it's her and she's she's getting all emotional because seven years ago Mm -hmm. when they were trying to get into the home ownership scene yeah they called a couple of lenders and because they weren't easy Mm -hmm. because they didn't have the credit or you know Mm -hmm. They didn't have the the income to to buy the five hundred thousand dollar home or whatever. They were just not important. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. not kind. Yeah. You know, treat people with kindness and respect. Um, so that's that's where the kindness comes into play. Like, yeah, you know, you're a human being that wants to change your stars, and I damn well want to help you do it. Yeah, that is so. Like, I feel like so many people almost like they take hard work and kindness and they make them like mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. Like I am too busy. I'm doing too much to be able to like take the time to like really hear you and understand you Yes, because Mm -hmm. I'm important. And as a, like, as opposed to flipping it to saying like, Oh, I'm, I'm working hard for you because I care about Mm -hmm. the outcome for you. So it's like this change in, you know, paradigm 
because that and I think like to to your point like um and you spoke about um creating wealth you know for your own family but I think like larger than that I've heard the so the the concept of um American home ownership specifically is described as the greatest uh engine for wealth, wealth creation yeah. in the world it like is. in history yes. and so like doing that like helping someone tap into that is absolutely like life changing and doing it doing it in a way that's not transactional that is like seeing them as a human being and a person like it just brings a a whole nother like layer of just humanity to it that it's it does like, hey you are like here on this earth right now and you exist and you're important and mm-hmm. that's like i'm grateful for you know a realtor like you existing especially in our yeah. community because I know we want to, you know, eventually get to the point where we have that and we are a part of that as well. So yes. thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for acknowledging it's Yeah. Yeah, it, it does. It, it changes people's stars. And, yeah. you yeah. know, sometimes it's harder and sometimes it's easier. But on those harder files, man, when they mm. well, when they get those keys. Wow. Yeah. Talk about some people's why. It hits different. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, know. it's, it, it gives you chills. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's just, it, yeah. it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. And integrity, um, I, I do feel like in, in our, in our profession, unfortunately, sometimes uh, realtors en- end up putting their goals ahead of mm-hmm. their mm-hmm. clients. Mm. Um, and, and I, I personally am not a self-serving um, type of human. So that's mm-hmm. where the integrity piece comes in. That's part yeah. of my mission statement is I always put your goals ahead of mine. And right. sometimes, sometimes that means talking me out of a job at that moment Yeah, because it's not my goal. It's mm-hmm. yours. And right now is really not the time for you, but we're going to come up with a plan that yeah. that will get you where you need to be. And mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's where kind of the integrity, the integrity piece comes in. Sometimes my husband says I get way too emotionally involved, but that's what, that's what, makes, that's what if, makes you you. I don't know if that's like a woman thing or what, because I think I'm the same way. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't know. Kyle can sometimes separate things and I can't, I feel like if I'm involved in yes. it, like it's a part of me and yeah, Sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes it's a bad thing. It, yeah. Um, but yeah. It can be bad. I mean, I know for me, I have like I have to be intentional about choosing to feel and be like not, you know, contextualize things too much cuz yes. if I do, then I can become kind of like, you know, cold and a little like analytical where mm-hmm. it's like no, it's like there's still like there's still a human element, so I can't I can't just completely go all right these are the numbers, this is what makes sense, and do it like that. But I don't know. I think you can do both. Like, you know, to your point, like you said, that there may not, like this might not be the right time for them. Yes. And so mm-hmm. it's just being analytical and being like seeing the numbers, but also like not just caring about, you know, your side of that ledger. Like you're yes. caring about the whole picture. Yes. And you're like, hey, this is not beneficial for both of us. So let's let's wait, let's make a plan. And I'm, yeah, yeah, that's... That's a that's like next level. Yeah, that's selflessness, right? Yeah, like yeah, because essentially you're 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 losing out on on money at yeah. that point, right? Like, but choosing yeah. to say like, hey, this isn't like a good time, you know, whatever the case may be, yeah. and telling them like, I don't know, that's yeah. like, and in reality, if you boil it down to even the dollars, maybe in that moment I'm missing out, but. If you go back to if you're living within your means and you're mm-hmm. you're coming from contribution and you're doing things right in, in your own personal life and in, in your business, yeah, the dollars that that I may have lost in this moment, mm-hmm. I should gain tenfold mm-hmm. in the next because hopefully they value mm-hmm. that honesty, yeah, mm-hmm. um, and they see the benefit, and then that turns into a buy and a sell and referrals and mm-hmm. yeah, you know, you got a for life or uh, uh, yeah, a yeah. lifelong. And, and I, I'm supposed to call them clients, but they're friends. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. hug them all. Sometimes they tell me to stop. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's little. hard. It's hard for me to stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh man. 
That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see. You don't want to keep your laptop up there? I guess I can, yeah. It'd probably be. Uh, yeah, I'll just leave it there. There we go. Okay. Um. Oh, so that's perfect. So my... <laughs> The question that like came up as a you know in response to what you were saying was like as like was it always that way when you started in real estate or did you learn some of that or was it um, the question we wrote was what was the journey to creating that culture and that's what I was wondering just you know. did you start like that was it kind of trial and error were there some things that you know. So what was that journey look like? The way I describe it might have been different when I first started because mm -hmm. I came from um, I came from a place of want mm -hmm. when I first started. Um, you know, we just we were just so broke. <laughs> you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. so uh, so the words have changed probably, but the way that I go at real estate and the way that I talk with my clients that has not changed. Yeah. Um, I've, I've never been, nor will I ever be the person that is pushing for a sale yeah. in order to, to earn a commission. My very first commission check was a thousand dollars and it was from an investor to me hands and we're still friends today. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, the way I treated them is no different than the way I treat my clients now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only difference is instead of taking that whole thousand dollars and going to the store and buying name brand Gatorades and name oh. brand groceries and all the things, <laughs> yeah, I now I now work off the profit first model mm -hmm. and I I allocate funds to different accounts, mm -hmm. yeah, so that I'm I'm smart with my money and I'm smart in business and I'm setting my kids up my why mm -hmm. um, for success. Yeah. So, so the journey, uh, the, the journey has looked different, but my values and the way I've treated people mm -hmm. and the way I go about my business has very much been the same from day one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But you just been able to kind of like nail it down and figure out why, why it works that way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know that it's, it's hard work and it's kindness and it's integrity it, yeah. and it's always been that, but I, I probably did describe it differently because yeah. I was coming from a place of want. So mm -hmm. I was in a very big hurry all the time. Yeah. You know, um, I think like being able to being able to like pull that out and define it is like a really, a, a specific like indicator of like innate leadership. And cause you're, you're not just like good at something or you don't just understand like why, or you know, you don't just understand like how to do something. You, you know how to get others to do the same thing. Yeah. And, mm -hmm teaching that or, um, showing that is like, yes, you know, sometimes stuff just happens. He's like, I don't know, this is, I'm just like this. And then yeah. you get to the point where you're like, Hey, here's the roadmap to do it. And yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. So many things. Yeah. Um, so kind of talking about culture, right? We know that real estate is constantly changing. How do you adapt to that? education <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's the teacher in me um mm -hmm. i i never want to be the smartest person in the room mm -hmm. um you know i i am always looking to learn i'm i drown myself in classes yeah. um, continuing education credits classes at my brokerage um you know nlp neuro-linguistic um, programming. I mean, just, mm. just any and all classes. Um, I'm a, a big believer in coaching. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually want to start my own coaching business. Oh. I can see it. Uh, yeah. so yes. I, you know, I have always maintained coaching to some extent for mm. the last five years. Mm -hmm. Um, so for me, it's just, it's education. It's, it's, it's learning and knowing and learning and knowing and learning and knowing repeat, repeat, repeat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Never stop learning. Never yeah. stop learning. Yeah. You know, I, I think once we think we know it all, we're in the mm -hmm. process of dying. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's true. That, yeah. Usually I found too that the people that think that they know it all, you don't really want to be around them. No. Like, because mm -hmm. they tell you. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's take it a step further. Can we talk about the educated fool? Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh gosh. My goodness. Yeah. 
We mm. can't. That, that highly educated idiot. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Oblivious. Now that is, yeah. those are people like, the, those are people that are difficult for me because you, you really just sometimes just want to sit down and like, just say, well, let's just talk. Mm-hmm. Like, you, I don't need all these big fancy words, you mm-hmm. know, let's just talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because there has to be something. There's a root to everything, mm-hmm. right? And so it's like, I think oftentimes there's some sense of like insecurity. Yeah. And so, yeah, we, when my mom, if my mom hears this, she's going to be like, yep, I know some, <laughs> somebody mm-hmm. that's just... It's just like that. Um, educated fool. Yeah. And I don't know. They're dangerous. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. The educated fool. Yeah. But it's, you know, to go back on education, it's learning within applying. Right. Yes. Would you say that there's no sense in you learning if you're not going to apply it? The only way I'm going to learn something and not apply it is if I just t- totally just don't agree with it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You know, I mean, there. I mean, there's like, especially there's some financial teachings out there that you know, used to be coveted and mm. highly regarded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now I'm like, well, the world's changed, yeah. you know? Yes. Credit cards are bad if you can't pay them off, mm-hmm. but if you use them right, you can fly for free. You right. can stay in hotels for free. So there are things that you can do to work to your advantage. So yeah, if I'm learning something more often than not, I'm applying it in some way, shape or form. Yeah. Unless yeah. I just absolutely just, don't agree with it right that makes sense I have not done well with that i will i never stop learning but i will stop applying and <laughs> not <laughs> just <laughs> i tell you i think that th- i think that is the majority of us mm-hmm. i had uh i had a mentor tell me my my mentor that i still have today in real estate mm-hmm. and she took me to my first convention and I, we would have what we called brain dumps, right? Yeah. And so we would have pages and pages of notes of all of the sayings and all the things that we learned. And and then your mind is just like, I can't even be stretched mm-hmm. anymore. Yeah. And then you leave and you don't do a damn thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the worst. Yeah. So what she said to me is, Put all of this stuff in a notebook, keep your notebooks, revisit your notebooks yearly or semi-annually or how often you want to visit it, yeah. but never leave a class or a seminar or a coaching session without implementing one thing. Mm. So yeah. no yeah. matter what, I implement one thing always. And if I don't get one thing out of it, like for example, with my coaches, like within the first 90 days, mm-hmm. we are ending that relationship. Mm. Mm. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you mean by, you said if you don't, what did you just say? If I don't, if I'm not able to pull one thing out okay. of it that I, I can implement like within that first new? 90 days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That makes sense. So like my one coach, Philip Aldifer in, uh, in Alaska, he, mm-hmm. he taught me that, that if, that me personally, I'm not, if I'm not attached to a goal, Mm -hmm. I can talk about it. I can say the affirmations. I can journal about it. I can have it on my vision board. If I don't feel it in my gut, Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. Mm. Yeah. It sounds. How many people? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's That's me. me. (laughs) How many people? So I had this, this goal for, um, almost four years on Mm -hmm. my vision board. I thought about it. I fantasized about it. I, I was saying affirmations in my head about it. And I just could not hit it. And he was like, let's talk about your student loan debt. And we visited that and he walked me through that. And, and it's, and, and, and and that was a powerful story for him to hear. And and he said to me, you did that, which for many is unattainable Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. failure was not an option for you. Mm -hmm. You were very attached to that goal. And that resonated with me. Um, I had another coach tell me that um, the small wins, you know, you need to, you need to celebrate the small wins like every day. And it sometimes just starts with making your bed, but Mm -hmm. outwardly saying, Angela, I'm proud of you. Like you got up, you got up on time, you made your bed, you've had your coffee, you got on the elliptical, like you're a rock star. Yeah. Why can't we celebrate those wins? That's true. You know, uh, the profit first model came from another coach. So, you know, just little tidbits that I've taken and implemented and they've changed my life. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. I think I like, yeah. I know for me personally, I get caught up in so much accomplishment in the macro and like yes. over like, 
the overarching like uh, like I want to reach this specific goal and I miss all of the tiny steps that I've taken like in between and so like I wouldn't I will I will fall short of like a larger goal but then I I won't you know say well hey you accomplished this this and this along the way I'll just be like no you you just failed and you suck so yeah you see yeah so. and then you start creating this story that's just it's just it's not true. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. unhealthy. Yeah. It can be demoralizing. You know, all of these things from these stories that we create that just, mm-hmm. that just aren't yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. You anyway. know, like the single mom that you referenced earlier, that's in this job that they hate and they want to go out and yeah. work, work for themselves. You know, I mean, just, just imagine if that mom every day was like, I've got these seven things jotted on this notepad and this is how I'm going to start my business. It may not be today. Yeah. Mm hmm. But at least I have the forethought to put this information on paper and one day it's going to come to fruition. It's going to be my reality. Mm-hmm. Like, why can't we celebrate that? That's yeah. a big win. Yeah. You're going to be an incredible coach. Yeah. I just want you to know that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm like, I would never think to do that. Right. But it's, I think we, I don't know, it's, it's the compare, the whole comparison thing, right? Like you see this, that you see what other people are doing or portray that they're doing. Portray. And That's so, the keyword. yeah, mm-hmm. it's a, it, the whole thing is a facade. Mm-hmm. And so you think, oh, well, I didn't do something as major. So this little thing that I did didn't really move the needle. But yeah, like what you were saying, like I got up and I made my bed this morning. That's like a step that I, from yesterday. Like that's an improvement. Right. So yes. I my think kid it's woke just up with a roof ones. over his head and mm-hmm. had a beautiful breakfast and wasn't yelled and screamed at and didn't suffer abuse the night before. That's mm-hmm. I mean, we have so many wins every single day. Yeah. Yeah. We just don't think about them because they become such a part of our routine. And we don't. Oh and imagine God. if we taught that to our kids. So one thing that, like, <laughs> that just made me think of this. And it's so funny. Like, I can I can point it out and see it in others. But, like, um, the other day, Cannon asked us, like, he was like, hey, what can I do to earn, like, having a TV in my room again? And, like, I thought about it for a second. And I was like, if you can, like, get up in the morning and, like, get yourself ready for school. You, we'll we'll give you your TV back and like the last like three days, up yeah. every morning by himself at six a.m. getting himself dressed and brushing his teeth and I'm like, holy crap, dude! I'm like, <laughs> look, I'm like, look what you're doing! Like yes. this used to be a fight at six thirty, yes, like for us to come in and wake him up and now he's like up on his own. Sometimes mm-hmm. like, you know, not a lot, a couple of days he got up before us and we get up and we're like, what is going on? Yeah. It's, and then imagine internally what's going on with him. Mm-hmm. A, he's learning that he has to earn things. Everything's not given to him. And, yep. and B, you're like filling his cup with all of these compliments, which yeah. internally mm-hmm. he's got to be like, I'm, I'm the man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at me. Yeah. Well, he and he's that anyway. But yeah. mm-hmm. And he's learning independence and all yeah. that. Like, yeah. It's, I don't know. Those small yeah. wins, man. Whew. Yeah. They are. They're powerful. Man. I'm and they start add up to really something. big ones. Yeah. I know. That compound. Yeah. Yes. Oh it's man. Give, give me chills. You're I'm preaching like, here. Yeah. I didn't know we were going to church. <laughs> Angela's just, preaching. Just think about you guys, right? Like mm-hmm. when did you start this studio? And like yeah. how did how did you know what I mean? You you did a bunch of little things and now here you are in this beautiful space with this amazing room and Yeah. You know, do you ever celebrate that? Probably not. No, you probably worry not. about a bigger studio and a bigger room and yeah. you know. I think yeah. because we're always so focused on the next, we can't appreciate the now. Correct. Yeah. And I know I do that all the time. It's like, okay, we hit this goal. What's next? Yeah. Like I'm always in produce, 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 produce. And so Same. I don't sit in the, and I think the reason why I don't, and it's probably wrong is because I don't want to get comfortable. Yeah. Mm. I don't want to get comfortable. And in five years, I'm still in this same space. I'm, I'm going to appreciate it. Of course. But yeah. for me, I'm like, I want to constantly like, grow and go to the next level but i think sometimes the con of that is not appreciating yeah right this is like a badass like room right like it is so i'm gonna celebrate i'm gonna drink some champagne tonight and it doesn't mean that you're getting comfortable being comfortable yeah it just means that you're acknowledging your hard work and and you're complimenting gianni and you're complimenting kyle and i'm complimenting angela like that is okay yeah you know what? Yeah. 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 You're gonna. Yeah. This is therapy. Life it changing. is. I'm loving this. Yes. What are we talking about next? <laughs> 
So let's right. talk about community, right? Because we first mm. met you at a networking group. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I said earlier how you always make everyone feel welcome. But what does community like really mean to you? Mm. It means family. It means friendship. Mm-hmm. It means loyalty. It means growth. It, 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 community I never knew how big community was to me until I had the privilege of being a part of these two networking groups. The, mm-hmm. can I say them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The ball ground business club and the Canton business club. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I went to Woodstock business club first uh, a couple of years ago and I realized what an amazing concept they had. And I very much wanted to R and D it rip off and duplicate. Mm-hmm. So I, I got with Chris Mack and, and I, I'll never forget him and I sitting down at Reformation and I was like, Chris, we, we've got to bring this to Canton. Like mm-hmm. Canton is, um, it, it is so in need of something like this yeah. and, and we did it. Yeah. And, and now three years later, it, it gives me chills. I, I'm not like, I don't want to talk and lead the groups and all the things, yeah. uh, but seeing the businesses that have mm-hmm. have been birthed yeah. from it, that have grown, yeah. that have gone next level. Um, people have fallen in love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People have pivoted. And, you know, it, I honestly, um, I don't close a whole lot of business from the business clubs. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, it, it fills my cup mm-hmm. to see the lives that are being changed mm. from it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it it wow yeah I, I mean it puts a huge smile on my face I just community is is all of that and and networking is probably the heart of it um, yeah wow, wow. wow. right <laughs> yeah that it's is, just yeah yeah so many lives have changed because of these business clubs yeah I would agree and for, for sure. all of us that can be in that room mm. that can say we had a hand in that. Yeah. I mean, how many people have you referred out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That and, you may have saved, you may have saved them from going hungry or you may have gotten them into that house or yeah. what out of that bad, just, just a Yeah. We've all changed lives by yeah. going to these networking groups. Yeah. And to do it, <laughs> do it in a way that's like with humility and for yes. the purpose of like, just because you want to, edify and like to like shepherd someone else's life along to the next level without the you know the need to say oh I, you know we can monetize we, we can figure out how to yeah. like corner this and mm-hmm. it's like no we're just doing it because it just because it makes our community better it makes our we love community and yeah. it makes our community better yeah oh yeah we don't get paid for that yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean and you can feel it too when you walk into the room that like even if you're new, it may be a little bit awkward because you don't know anybody, but you can... I just remember when I walked, I think I, we started going, what, like June? Mm, yeah, it was shortly after we had... Uh, Angela's probably one of the first people who walked up to me. I don't remember, but just when you walk in the room, you're like, I don't know anybody, but I feel kind of comfortable. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> This might be my tribe. Yeah. 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 So it's... Yeah. What y'all have created there. What well, we... Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's all of us. That's true. It's a compound effect. It is. Yeah, yeah that's... I didn't even look at it that oh, way. Oh, yeah. But that's true. It's everybody that's in there mm-hmm. because... Yeah. Man. It absolutely is. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. it really is like Goodness. a tribe because it, like, it, it attracts the type of person that is just, like, so good and, like, healthy for that yes. group. And the people who are there just, you know, kind of... I mean... Obviously, there everybody is there to like grow their business, but the people that are there just to be transactional to steal one long. of your words, they don't. They don't last, and you know it's because mm-hmm. they're never they're mind. takers. I won't. Yeah, <laughs> they're takers. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, then and there's nothing wrong with it if, if that is fine if that's yeah. your personality. Yeah, but it, it, they typically weed themselves out. Yeah. yeah, in our in our group. Yeah. yeah. For sure. And not because they're unwanted. It's just because the, the vibe that I feel like that we've created and the, the family and, and the sense of community were, were very just like, 
what can we do to lift you up? What can we do to build mm-hmm. your business? You know, who do we need to connect you with? Yeah. You know? Um, I imagine that's hard, too, because it probably creates a very, like, internalized, like, debt towards the people. Like, they may not ever say it, but they feel like this deep debt towards the people in the room, and they don't feel comfortable with you know, persist in that type of like transactional relationship mm. with them. And so mm-hmm. they're looking for someone that they're not really connected to. They're not really like in a deep uh, relationship with, mm-hmm. and they just want to like, you know, get paid and kind of like get, get away as yeah. quickly yeah. as possible. And yeah. I hope my, like my hope and my prayer is that like, you know, what, what the community is that is growing, like eventually like, it infects that person and gets them to the point where they start to realize and say mm-hmm. like, Oh, you know what? Like I shouldn't view my business or my, my trade or my craft or whatever it is in this way. Like it's, there's something much better that I could be a part of. And it, yeah. you know, it's, they're missing out is really what, what it boils down to. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. They really are. Well, it, I think it also forces them to, to, change their way of like thinking a little you don't have any choice but to when you go to camp business club Mm -hmm. and walk around right like you you can come in there with the intention of i'm gonna try to close as many people as i can but then when you start talking to people yeah it rubs off on you to actually build relationships and community so (laughs) yeah it's like dang i was coming here trying to close like now i got some friends (laughs) yeah dang it (laughs) yeah yeah dang it i didn't come here for this Uh uh-huh yeah yes it's that good infection or it is man it really is yes infection that's funny listen we could talk for hours um this has been great i can't wait to go back and listen to this episode because there were so many (laughs) things that you said i'm like ooh, i need to like print that and put it on put it like print the quote put Mm -hmm. it on my desk put it on a shirt i don't know um but yeah, we just appreciate your time. Thank yes, you. So I appreciate much. you having me. I was super nervous, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the last question. Okay. I feel mm-hmm. like it's the most important question. Okay. You've just won, like, I don't know. Let's just say you just won a Grammy or an Oscar. What would you say in your thank you speech? So this was one that I was going to write out. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to prepare for this interview. (laughs) Okay, y'all, can I preface it by saying I'm super simple. I'm Mm -hmm. pretty basic, and um, I just don't get overly fancy. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be I am forever grateful Mm -hmm. for having the work ethic and the opportunity to get me here today. Mm. I am filled with gratitude for the people who chose to hire me. Mm. And who continue to refer me out. And I will continue to work hard to make you proud. Boom. Little. That's, that's it. Cue the music. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I mean. I love that though. I think some people get too overly complicated. And you're like, wait a minute. What were you even? I love that. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's such a humble thank you. I was really a little bit embarrassed to share it. And I, I really, I tried to write out all this stuff and I was like, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to do me. Yeah. <laughs> just going to do yes. me. I love that. Well, this has been fantastic. Um, Thank you for this having is, me. I don't even know what to yeah. say. This has been really, really good. Yeah. Um, Thank you so I can't much. Wait for I adore you guys. Thank you. Well, we adore you too. Thank yeah. you. Honestly. Thank um, you. So yeah. So perfect. Yeah. How do we want to end it? I know we got to do the introduction, but how do we want to end it? Um, so, so far we've been really bad at ending these, but today we're going to end it with, this has been the Canon Studios podcast with our beloved friend, Angela.